Hello everybody, Cancer Sales here to show you another video on my Zoom. I'm going to be showing the 6-axis controller app. Uh, first of all, um, I am on EOS Nightly number 96, Android 404. Alright, so we're going to go back. Okay, so we're going to start the app. Now, after you first download the app, you got your PS3 controller. You got your little OTG cable. Hook up this to your Zoom. Plug in your controller with your cable. You know, the lights will start flashing. Then you're going to hit pair controller. It's going to run through a little thing. It's going to pop up a Bluetooth address which is the Bluetooth address of your device and then you're gonna hit pair and then I'll set up your controller with this as the master Bluetooth address then you can unplug it and the first thing you would do start your controller now I'm gonna hit start on the app running through some stuff Listening for controllers, client connected one. And now my controller's connected, stop flashing. I can go back to the home screen with my joystick. You can see it kind of moves my home screen around. Somewhat. Okay. So to set up your controls, you would need to go to up here to the top where you got your settings and preferences. Now you have a few options for some of the ones that I've been doing. I've been doing touch emulation. You go to edit touch profiles. All right, then you double tap. It's going to bring up a menu. Now you can add buttons. You know, whichever you need, anything. The the joysticks, L2, X square, whatever. You know, let me add one real quick. Um, we'll add square, so it puts up that. You can move it around, you can put it wherever you need it. You can uh, double tap the button, hit button properties. You can make the touch mode of it normal to where if you just tapped it, it doesn't normal tap. Or you can have it to where it's a swipe button, left or right, or an up and down. Um, you can add, add a button, add a joystick, analog left. Now with these, you can make, let's see, it should make double tap it button properties now these you can change you got a bunch of different options you can invert the axis you know to make down is up and up is down change the dead zone sensitivity um, I'll explain that relative to or I'll explain the wrap mode in that relative touch in a second all right so you can make you'd make a profile you'd save your profile right and then once you have it all made and you test it out a little bit and you save it, then you come over here to these. These are your active touch profiles. Get that in there. You click this to bring it down. And then these are the ones that I have saved on here right now. Right now I have it set on, so on that racing game, bang bang racing. I'll show you all the profile. Double tap the menu, load profile, bang bang racing. See right now this one's an easy setup. My left joystick right there, L2 and R2 for me to go forward and back. I'll start that up. So leave that. It's already been saved. Make sure that the game you're going to play is set up here in this option. Then go back. I'll start up the game. Now, 
ready to go. Okay, that's why. The controls that I have right now are set for auto acceleration. So, I would only need to use the joystick. Hang on, let me go back. Quit that. Play. Yeah, that's one thing you have to watch is like, the game has its own settings, certain games. What we're gonna do is do uh, full control. Now we'll start it. So now, if you pictured your 6-axis app, that clear screen, you'd have it set up. You know, my joystick's here, my L2 and R2 are there. And now, it can go. This guy's getting in the way. And it, you know, it responds really well. Okay, well, maybe a little bit of, if you're hitting maybe the joystick or something else at the same time, it might be registering another touch. But overall, it works pretty well. I never really have any problems at all. And as you can see, I'm like, see I'm stopped. Now I hit the button, gonna go. <laughs> I always seem to miss the same turn over and over. Finish out this lap. So you all get the idea of that. That's a simple one to set up. And it, you know, you can always, you know, you can always start a game if you get, in most games that are touch enabled will have their controls everywhere. You can uh, take a screenshot, load that screenshot into the app, and then, you know, map the picture, you know, map your buttons with your screenshot because you know you have the buttons for whatever that you need now if we go back I will load up Dead Space stop that one It's gonna make me watch this intro. Good morning, <coughs> Show. I'll skip through it when I make the video. Alright, I've gotten through the introduction. Let's see, okay. Now with Dead Space, it has your controls 
Well, I guess I'd show you on my profile real quick. Get that right there. Um, load profile, dead space. Okay. In dead space we have it set up with my left joystick, pretty big on the left side, the right joystick. Over here with that cross, which means touch wrapping is enabled. Um, I got my select button down there, R1, R3, a start, and then up and down on the D-pad for swipe actions. And then my X button right in the center for like interacting with, with stuff. I'll show you how that's going to work. And why games like this can cause a little bit of problems with the control just because you don't have a certain shooting button you know like I mean you do but it's like this whole side of the screen is to shoot you know you tap here drag your finger tap again and you shoot you don't have a dedicated actual button like on you know Modern Combat 3 to just shoot with right, get back to the game okay. so now we can move now touch wrapping is enabled so that your right joystick will allow you to move the camera in 360 degrees because if it's not then the, you know you go left and right it's just gonna stutter back and forth it's not actually gonna move you in a full circle I can run around freely and I have my controls in 6 axis I have that option set to inverted not on the game but I'm not sure if that actually would matter Here's an example of my action button. I had that action button set up right in the center of the screen. So now, it's pretty much when I move my camera, you know, that button was set to about maybe right here on the shoulder. So when I move my camera, that's where I need to get that. So that button will take effect. And then, you know, You're in back that up. Let me show you my control. So like if I have it here, and I'm hitting X, it's not going to do nothing. If I put it, you know, right there about on his shoulder, that's where my button's going to hit. Usually, pretty much for anything that you want to interact with, you're going to want to get that button in that spot. And if you can think of a better idea, let me know. We've arranged some tools for you. Find a plasma saw in a locker up ahead. example of my d-pad to use this plasma saw and cut this box and you know playing the game normally you would swipe over there up in the corner you would swipe up and that would do your saw but I put that d-pad option in that corner so I can just hit my d-pad up and it'll do it for me And as you saw before, I had, uh, what was it, R3? It was set to this one, which gives you the option to pause. That's why you push that one. Then I had the start button set for pausing. Then you push it again. Then I had this button's your waypoint right here in the corner. I had it set for, at least select, actually. Yeah, that'll show you where you got to go. And, just, and the nice thing is, you know, you push... R3 takes those options off and then you know that function is not going to work now because that key you know my waypoint's not there my pause button's not there so that's not going to do nothing now until you bring those options back up now let's get started let's see now destroy the power boxes I'm going to just hit d pad up and I'll swipe it
I want to get to a part where I get the guns so I can show you all the shooting. Okay. See, now the thing with this game is when you want to shoot your weapon, they want you to type the right side of the screen, you know, move it around to aim, and then you know, tap again to shoot. That's how it works. There's no actual just, you know, move the camera around and have this one button here to shoot. You can pretty much push the button anywhere to shoot. That's one of the problems with this one. So, I believe I had it set to R1. I go back to my app. Load the profile. Yeah, I had R1 down here in the corner for just to make it as a trigger button. But so I can do that, you know, I can hold I can hold my R1 button. Push that to shoot because it's on this right side of the screen. Pretty much any button that's going to be over here is going to shoot that gun. I mean, not my option button because it's set to that one spot, but it's like if I just kind of jiggle the joystick here. See, I can make them shoot. Well, I'm adding bullets now. But that's one of the. Pick up that ammo. That's one of the problems with having. You know, no actual dedicated fire button because now I can just kind of move this and I'll shoot his gun instead of you know, me actually having the control, like you know, total control. Power box. Okay. But I mean, you do have someone, I guess, if you're, you know, for sure with your movement on the joystick, it's not going to pick it up. It's whenever you start kind of making little movements and taps. And then with this too, rotating this screen, that, I haven't actually figured out something for that, because, yeah, I mean, it actually wants you to rotate it. I don't have uh, my rotation on right now. But, you know, that's what I've come up with so far. If y'all have any ideas, please let me know. Let's see. This one. Now for comparison, something that has, you know, it's more demanding, I guess, on controls. Where's that? Start up Modern Combat 3. Or not. Oh, yeah, because I've done wipes. Too many wipes to remember. So the data's not there right now. We'll make that another video. Alright, well, if you have any ideas for a Dead Space game or any thoughts, just let me know. Later.